G'day you beautiful people. Thank you for joining me for another vlog in the beautiful Aussie Outback. Today, I want to explain to you why this lens has to instantly get out of my camera bag, unfortunately. Let's get into it. G'day beautiful people, thank you for joining me for another vlog in my second home, almost becoming my first home, the Aussie Outback. Today, I want to explain to you why this Fujifilm lens has to get out of my camera bag immediately. As soon as I'm getting home, I'm putting it on a bus and just sending it as far as it can go. I want to explain to you exactly why it's going to happen today, but today, it's a little bit interesting, full of Aussie facts, incredible wildlife, and this not so good lens that used to be the bee's knees. So make sure to drop below and subscribe because this series from Alpena Pound in South Australia is mind-blowingly awesome. Let's get into it. Part of what I love about being back home is our diverse wildlife. And unfortunately, yes, we have a lot of roadkill in Australia, but that also brings other animals in to feed. That is why I've got the big lens out today because there's unfortunately a dead kangaroo got hit last night, but there is a lot of crows around. So I'm going to sit basically on the middle of this road it's a national motorway going forward all the way to the northern part of Australia. Watch out for cars. I've got a perfect composition of a dead kangaroo, plenty of crows around, and also an epic mountain of Wilpeter Pound in the background. I'm going to set the GoPro up there because if you could hear the noise of the amount of flies on that dead kangaroo, it is absolutely crazy. But hopefully, when that's there, the crows won't be scared. They'll come back. We get some awesome footage of that. So if you are a bit queasy about this sort of stuff, maybe don't watch the rest of this video because this is going to be absolutely beautiful, but it's definitely the waiting game. And hopefully there's no cars. Every time they come past, they destroy my composition. Let's go and get this dead kangaroo. Ah. To me, that's what makes the Aussie Outback so great and so fascinating. One kangaroo dies, but it fills so many other animals up. Nothing goes to waste out here in the Outback, and that is what I absolutely love. But it doesn't just happen once or once a day. It happens all the bloody time. Here, 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 and another, and another. Unfortunately, out here in the wilderness, it is survival of the fittest. And unfortunately, some don't make it, but it allows others to feed off because all around me here, I have got crows, on end, on end. I would stay in this vicinity from 200 meters that way to half a kilometer that way. I'd have 50 to 60 crows just perched on the fence, in trees, knowing exactly where I am to get to that food source because everyone out here is survival for the fish. You can see where that footage I rolled before, there is a kingpin. There is a dominant bird that's basically sitting there squirking to say it's my food, wait your bloody turn until I'm full. No one's eating until I am full because that is the animal kingdom and how it works out here. Only the kingpin survives until they are moved on. But I'm gonna keep exploring this, probably half a kilometer stretch. I can walk between them because I can already see down there again is the bloody wedgetail eagle. Oh, I love this. I absolutely love this. Oh my God, guys, I'm so pumped. I have to be quiet to bring you this. There is a wedgetail eagle sitting on the side of the road. It's Australia's biggest bird, the king of the sky. Depending if it's male or female, she'll be about two and a half meters wingspan and could weigh up to about five kilos. Unfortunately, I think she's gonna fly away because I'm going right towards her food. But they're the biggest bird, there she goes.
That's what she wants right there. And I'm protecting it. They're the biggest bird in Australia. Lived to about 11 years out in nature, but up to 40 years in captivity. Five kilos if she's a female and about three to four kilos if she's a male, if it's a male, sorry. But they are the biggest bird in Australia and the top five biggest birds in the world. They are absolutely impressive. I'm gonna put this camera down to try and get some photos because my heart is racing so much. So this will be my last time shooting with this lens. I need a longer focal range for stuff like this. Being back in Australia, the 200 mil just isn't long enough. So unfortunately, in me thongs, me flip flops and jandals, I'm gonna have to walk through that scrub to try and photograph this bird. But unfortunately out here, it is territory for the Eastern Brown, the deadliest snake in Australia, the second deadliest in the world. So if I don't make it out of here alive, I'm gonna blame the XF 55 to 200 and me chasing the wedge tail eagle. But it'll be the last time I shoot with this lens. This lens has to go because right now it is very frustrating to be so far away from the subject. Not sure if you can see in the background there, but up there flying around is the other one. It's gotten a lot closer before. It was probably a couple of kilometers away, but now it's gotten much closer. Either that or there's two birds in the vicinity, but that's, uh, sorry, two mates in the vicinity. That's very unlikely because these things are so territorial. But basically what I'm doing with the XF55 to 200 is walking around at ISO 400, and I'll get to that in a minute why. I'm shooting on app, um, aperture priority, but using the max aperture. So for this at 200, it's 4.8, unfortunately. And then shooting at automatic shutter speed. The reason I'm going up to 400 ISO is just giving that really fast shutter speed. because I'm shooting at continuous uh, autofocus. So basically by putting it continue oil focus, I can light up the subject like I'm doing just there. And then shooting in that um, continuous low, not continuous high, doesn't need to be that fast. They're not super fast birds. Well, they do go up to about 80 kilometers an hour if they do feel attacked or they're chasing something. But right now they're not really that vulnerable. They would probably, you know, eat me alive if they had to. So that CL is fine on the Fuji film to get everything that I want on the move again. The unfortunate thing I'm having is I've driven probably 200 meters from where I was photographing the other kangaroo that got killed and they're sort of going back and forth, back and forth. They think, you know, if you come up here, idiot, I'll go down there, you idiot. So that's sort of what they're doing right now. But I'll play the game. I'll keep tasting them, no problem whatsoever. I've got all day and the next 10 days ahead of me. Game on, bitches. I have driven up this stretch of road, walked up this stretch of road for the last four and a half hours and this is the moment it comes down to. The big boy or big girl is perched on the fence with Wolpina Pound in the background. It's exactly the image I had in my noggin that I wanted to capture. It looks so funny right now because there's a crow next to him and it looks like the little nerdy kid at school trying to become best friends with the bully that wants to be part of that gang. So I'm going to slowly sneak over once again to Eastern Brown Territory and hopefully, hopefully nail this image that I've... I didn't even know I wanted, but I really, really want right now. Why am I nervous? Why? All right, here I go. Wish me luck. 200 mil, continuous low, 160 ISO. Let's go. Let's go. Let's
on a day of wildlife photography, photographing in about one and a half kilometers of stretch of road, two dead kangaroos, 35 degree heat, and hundreds of photos later. But guys, 55 to 200, there's two things I've noticed today. One, it's actually not a bad bloody lens. In Slovenia, I never ever would have considered getting this out of my kit. But one big reason why I want it out of my kit is it puts me in dangerous situations. Situations I never had arise in Slovenia. To get to those images, to get to that focal range, to shoot that image where I was today, I wasn't looking on the ground at all times. I'm in Eastern Brown Territory, the deadliest snake, the second deadliest snake in the world. If that hit me out here, I'm pretty much dead. I don't want to be put in that situation. I want a longer focal range to get those images that I got today. I don't want my gear to hold me back. And that is why I think you get new gear when something is holding you back. And today it was. I've got a question to ask you people at the end of this. And secondly, I really worry about how sharp it is at 200 mil when photographing at that F 4.8 aperture, bumping up to 5.6. Yes, there's plenty of light around to get to that 5.6 to the F, uh, ISO 400, but that is one thing that worries me. But needless to say, I always say it's more important to capture the image than not capture it at all. So we've got the gear to capture those images, but as I said, the number one and most important thing for me is safety out here. That is where this lens doesn't equip what I need. And that is what I can say. If you're gonna upgrade gear, make sure to get it for the right purposes. But this is where I wanna ask you guys the question. The 70 to 300 or the 100 to 400. Before I got back to this beautiful country of Australia, I never even would have considered the 100 to 400. Actually, probably two weeks ago I wouldn't have because the 70 to 300 would have shed my landscape, travel, and dabbling in wildlife photography. Now, if you are gonna answer this, remember I am a landscape and travel photographer. I just dabble in wildlife photography during the day when I'm out bored as crap. One thing I'm worried about is it's so big and it's also double the price. That is a big concern for me, but if I'm gonna use it, I will be happy to get it. But for me right now, I'm leaning towards a 70 to 300 mil, the brand new one out. It's a perfect upgrade for this lens. Let me know in the comments below what you think of that, but this is getting chucked out, going to someone else's home, and I'll be getting a new lens in in the next month for this type of photography. So make sure to subscribe for that in the future. Guys, if you are interested in learning anything about travel and landscape photography, I will leave a link for my membership course in the description below. And if you want to donate to help support this channel, I also really appreciate that. But make sure to let me know what lens you will consider because I'll be photographing this in about half an hour and that will be our next week's vlog. But guys, thank you for exploring this beautiful one kilometer stretch in South Australia today with me. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao.